Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. And we are Autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Kaguya-sama Love is War, Season 2, Episode 9. Last episode was a pretty big episode. Kaguya was diagnosed with love sickness. Uh, there was a kiss that almost happened as well that I can't believe how almost it actually happened. It was so almost that it hurt that it didn't. Right? <laughs> and then I feel bad for Miko Ino for having to see that. And to, oh, the misunderstanding there is worse than any misunderstanding that has come before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also got the knowledge that Kaguya's mother had passed away from heart disease and her father, Nayo Take, was informed of Kaguya's, I guess, condition. That well, she's healthy and that she... Yeah. Possibly informed... About. About it. Yeah. We're not exactly sure. I think that was speculation that um, the father was told about the love sickness. Yeah. Oh. Which would uh, lead <laughs> to some possible issues in the future. Definitely. I would be scared for Miyuki in that sense if he ever has to like have like a one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, but we also had Hayasaka feeling pretty uh, bashful, embarrassed. Yeah. And then we had Miko Ino breaking a few rules and looking up the Chica. Yeah. Which is this whole show. Just Miko Ino looking up the Chica. What was it? Marine cart? Yeah. Marine <laughs> cart. Oh, that was so good. And Kage was like, which one are you, president? I don't know where we're going to go from here. I don't know if the repercussions of last episode are going to enforce what happens this episode or we're going to like take it easy a little bit. It would be kind of hard to forget about the almost kiss. Yeah. And I feel like the almost kiss is going to have to be still in both of their heads. Probably. You ready? Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> Oh. From seeing all the hijinks. Too many misunderstandings. Yeah. What? <laughs> Whoa. Draconian punishments. What is the context for this? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> a mission? Hope. <laughs> the visuals are amazing. <laughs> she did not. He was neglected. Is this Charlie Brown? <laughs> it looks like it. What the hell? It's Ichigami. You think? Please. When the what was that? Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Love. Wouldn't it be funny if it was Ichigami yeah. though? He has a history with her. Oh, yes. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> so this just makes Kaguya a villain this whole time. 
<laughs> oh my god. It's like Dominatrix Kaguya. It it feels right though. <laughs> Oh! Give it up. <laughs> no eyes. <laughs> That's so honest. I love that her imagination is so strong. Right? I, act I really like the visuals, like, in that whole beginning part of the episode you have to be right about the thing being ishigami because that was the name of the first part of the episode right i mean i would run away too if i had the humiliation of going to the hospital and being told it was because i was in love <laughs> she go back to the hospital like the focus point. A reset, whatever it's called. In Haikyuu? Yeah. Pavlovi and Hayasaka. The score of this episode is really good. <laughs> oh my god. If the meter hits 10. <laughs> Ooh, he's going on the attack. <laughs> oh no. They did. <laughs> K.O. Ishigami? <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't fit in there. <laughs> I never expected this kind of story from Ishigami. I like this. This is good. Does that mean Ishigami has to wear a girl's uniform? Mm -hmm. Maybe trade with the vice president? Onodera? Hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kaguya Ishigami stories. I want to see Miko Yuno's reaction to seeing Ishigami in Kage's uniform. Yes! Yes! 
Oh my god. No. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. I never would have guessed we'd get this. this I'm so happy. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs>。Is he jealous? I wonder if Mika went and got him. No. What a like like feel good way to end the episode. Okay, that was season two, episode nine of Kaguya-sama Love is War. What'd you think? The jealousy that we got at the very end, I think, was so much more satisfying and entertaining because of that shoujo bit we got yeah you're right a few episodes ago where yeah. it painted ishigami as a rival in love to miyuki yeah for kaguya and i think that that having that kind of it's almost like you didn't think of the fact that ishigami was another guy that kaguya was close to when there's only there's only two guys basically yeah. that she's close to and I feel like I didn't really think about him being another guy she was close to and not just this invisible member of the student council until that shoujo episode. Like, obviously, we got it like brings to the forefront the scenes that we've gotten of them together, Kaguya and Ishigami. And it makes you think of him in a different way, almost. When before it's like, yeah, there was no way he's just this side character. And now after that shoujo episode, it's like, well, he is a guy that she's close to, that they spend a lot of time together yeah. and she's able to talk to him. I not even the slightest feel any hint of romance in right, between the no. two of them either way. But it ever since the shoujo episode, it does like put that perspective mm -hmm. in play. Which More than it had means before. they can use it for Miyuki. Yeah, and Miko Ino. Right? I mean, it wouldn't, I don't think it would have as made as much sense to us as a viewer if uh, Miyuki started getting jealous over Kaguya and Ishigami if we didn't, if they didn't kind of shake us and be like, hey, what if you've thought of them in a weird universe where Ishigami is a romantic rival? Mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't think it would have been as uh we wouldn't have been able to get there yeah. and like be like oh yeah i get why he'd be jealous you know but now even more i'm like yeah of course he'd be jealous he thinks of himself as like this one guy that's in her life that she's able to talk to that seems to be getting to know her and breaking down her walls yeah I... but ishigami's over there and ishigami's his best friend too so that makes it complicated i Wonder how serious that would go because, like, part of me like doesn't want it to be anything more than like, am I jealous? Like, I wouldn't, I'd feel uncomfortable if it mm -hmm. led to like an interaction or something because of how much I don't feel like it's that. But obviously, like Miyuki feels completely different because he is in love, you know? Yeah, um, I think it's really nice for them to have emotions like that. Agreed. It fleshes out the character more. That and it furthers the feelings of actually being in love like they have to go through everything that is love mm -hmm. every feeling that you get even the really negative ones and i think that that is really great even like um i feel like people can even be jealous uh when they see the person they love in a completely platonic situation yeah and they n understand it's platonic it doesn't necessarily have to be a jealousy over a possible rival um, or romantic act. And like, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be like 
a health like a healthy jealousy it sounds yeah. even weird to say that but like you as an individual are allowed to feel feelings that aren't necessarily positive or could be considered bad or toxic but like to feel those emotions is just part of being a person and being human it's what you do with those feelings that like makes your character right yeah and we have miyuki dealing with the fact that kaguya is running away from him at the moment yeah and he walks in and sees that someone else it doesn't it almost doesn't even matter that ishigami is another guy it could be chica or someone else even at, at this point in probably how he's feeling i think it helps that he's it helps guy, that it's yeah. ishigami yeah but she the person he loves is running away from him at every step and he can't get close to her in this and episode. Then, yeah. And then he sees her reaching out mm-hmm. and touching someone else's face, sitting very close. It's yeah. like, what is he doing wrong where they can't sit and have laughs and talks that close together? It's very obvious to us as the viewer th- what the actual dynamic is between Kaguya and Miyuki and their feelings towards each other because that's the way that it was painted to, uh, like towards us. But it is very understandable, I think, to how oblivious Miyuki would be in this uh, situation. I think that it's very understandable how he would feel like and get to that feeling of jealousy and like, what did I do wrong? Like, you know... I, uh, the first part of this episode with Miko, you know, like recounting the past events and trying to reshape her perspective, the like aspect ratio change and like the difference in like character design and like visual visuals, like the blue and red lights, like behind Miyuki and Kaguya. I really enjoyed that. And then the rain scene with Chika. A weeping angel. Yeah. And then we had some Charlie Brown-ness. We got, I, so the only reason I think it's, Ishigami or that idea was planted in my mind in regards to the love letter, quote unquote, was that was the name of the first part of the story, wasn't it? That and she, I think it parallels with the fact that she doesn't mention him at all in her imagination, but her friend says, poor Ishigami. Yeah. And it's like, we already have established that Ishigami has some amount of not wanting Miko to be humiliated anymore. Correct. Even if he warps it to being like something less caring. But I, he really did kind of make It would fit. It makes sense. It's like it it wouldn't be out of left field and it would be like this this episode didn't tell us that Ishigami wrote that note or really gave us any hints to suggest that he did. But narratively I think you and I both feel that there would be substantial evidence and plot given already that would justify and make that make sense. Especially because she views him as a a waste to think about in her mind. And yet she thinks about this letter all the time to the fact that her friends, like you've told me this story like Mm -hmm. over 10 times, it would really work if it ended up being him. Yeah. And I, I could kind of see him, like, laying in a field behind the school, hiding from class or something, and looking over and seeing, like, a flower and, like, just picking it or something, and, like, for himself, and he's, like, sitting there, and he has this flower that he picked, and he's just messing with it, and then he witnesses her being really upset and just kind of decides to give it to her. Like, I could see him doing something like that. If they do go that route, I'm going to be very interested to see, like, how they go about it um at, if i'm honest at first like this is just completely on me seeing ishigami like going for the cheerleading thing i didn't know if this is a precursor to the student council at first because we had just come back right, from that right. initial flashback I, d- of him. I didn't either and then once it was like oh i can borrow from the student council i was like oh okay that makes sense. Surprised you didn't uh, join the board game club with Chica, but... <laughs> Did you have any fears that this might end up being a bullying situation? Yes. Okay. I'm very scared that the vice president is uh, going to embarrass Ishigami and the text to him telling him that band practice is this day and everybody's dressing up as the opposite uniform. Right. That- I mean, we know that they're all going to be talking in their group chat and he's only getting the emails that are for specifically yeah. this event and for official cheerleading squad business. And it it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous because I had that thought and have that feeling. 
but it hasn't done anything like that in the show before to that to that degree. If but they, we know how people view him from the first season when Kaguya was tutoring correct. him. Yeah, and so I. I don't think it's weird for us to be worried about something like that. It would definitely amp it up to 11 to anything that we've ever dealt with in the show before. And I don't want to see Ishigami getting bullied to that degree. Um, It would fit into the Miko and Ishigami situation because of the fact that Ishigami stepped in in a way to get Miyuki really to step in when Miko was getting humiliated. Yeah. And that could be... a, a great parallel to add in that Miko steps in when Ishigami's getting humiliated. She like busts some skulls, like <laughs> kicks down the door. I love that she painted herself in her well, earlier thing as being this person that wanted to not punish people for doing bad things in school when I'm like, aren't isn't that like your whole thing? Well, w- wouldn't that fit into the character though? Like if, if Ishigami, God forbid, does get bullied, who's going to have to deal with the outcome of that? The disciplinary the d- committee. Yes. I, okay, so, like, I can see it, I just, but I really don't want to yeah. actually watch it if it happens. I, we'll just skip over that. If he does get bullied, I don't think my heart could, Dude, like, handle he, watching him get, show up to the game to cheer and be the only one dressed as a girl. I'm obviously, like, my favorite character in the show is obviously Ishigami, and I, like, have very obviously been defensive of him and overly defensive of him and i recognize that and i do it because it's fun and like funny but like he is genuinely my favorite character and i like see like i see him as like a like a like a piece of glass like (laughs) i almost find him to be the most um realistic and um he's so fragile and relatable nice. of all of the characters he's the to me he's the most transparent like he's the most like i'm unapologetically myself and it kind of makes me sad even that he's trying to make himself into something else by joining these clubs like he's trying to make himself more outgoing and like change himself like and I, right like he forced himself we've already seen him go through the whole like pushing himself to st- to join the student council or to stay on it and then to become more active in the student council because of a fear of missing out on these, these events and these fun times and these hijinks. But I don't think he needs to change. Like he, the people of the student council, whether Chica likes to call him a pervert or what are you going to do with my dress? If I let you borrow it, like these people in the student council, he, He has identified that they all care about him and he wants to be a part of it. He doesn't need to go join other things and make other friends. He's already a part of something. Yeah. I, um, I obviously think it's like hilarious that, uh, it was stretched out in the chest uh, region. Um, and that made Kaguya a bit upset. I'm trying to find the part. I think that he said it, twice where he was like are you trying to awaken something within me um and then he brought up his or drag has it already debut. awakened <laughs> yeah like i just like seeing him like uh, okay we know ishigami and how like why chica can see him as a pervert and the jokes that he makes and when he's in that attitude but like when he said the thing regarding the, the chest being stretched because of his pectoral muscles and stuff like that lets me know that there is no ill intent in that, like, in a serious He's way. He's not even thinking about her boobs. Yeah. That's, like, the least perverted thing ever, is that he's literally not even thinking about her boobs. Yeah. And, and like, he's just, like, being completely, like, himself and, like... He's very, um, what would you say the word? Like, um, he's very, like, what he can see. Yeah. Observant. He kind of yeah. just calls out what he can see or feel in that immediate moment. He doesn't think of things before he says it. I... I am like I it was it was in my mind but I was I think trying to push it to the back of my mind hoping that it didn't come up the idea of him potentially getting bullied but the as pieces as, are there and I don't want it to happen. As soon as he got the message and he looked out the window and he seemed to have this like confidence in himself for trying this new thing I was yeah. like shoot. 
Okay, I also think that Miko totally saw way more of him than they showed us in I, the shots. Miko saw the boxers. Yeah. And then just it was like, not for me. I, I'm, I'm not doing this to myself. <laughs> I again. wonder what her imagination is doing. Yeah. After very, she leaves. Very true. <laughs> I I wonder what me I think that's a really good question because I wonder how her imagination changed after the interaction with Kaguya regarding Miyuki and her feelings towards him because like it made me think like Miko's like starting to maybe put together pieces but obviously I could be way out, like I way mean, wrong. Like, if you think about it, she could also be used as the type of character where she can't like there's no way that they would like each other or yeah. that Kaguya would fall for him or something. I don't know. It seems so easy to piece together on our end, but I I don't know, man. I I really liked obviously like the just the, the fight. Yeah, the fight. The fight scene, the like you're playing a video game. Mm-hmm. I mean, Yuki was really hitting it with the lines. He was really throwing some punches. Yeah. I I don't know. I love, I think my favorite, like one of my favorite types of episodes is every time Kagi and Miyuki reacts because it gives me like, like a very real, like feeling to me. What do you think about like, uh, the reason Ishigami's trying to join these clubs? Becoming a normie. Like he wants to become normal in a sense, maybe because like other, of how people would treat him or like he just i think he instead of i think he it's almost like he still wants to be in i feel like normies are invisible in a way like you're a part of the crowd so then you don't get noticed for not being a part of the crowd sure but at least you're part of a crowd and i feel like that's what ishigami might be feeling like even though that he i believe realizes that he is part of a crowd like the student council he like they showed us a shot of basically him sitting alone multiple times, yeah, both in his younger years and then now, and it's kind of sad. Like I, I, I mean, in a way, like the student council, we're seeing a big moment for him that he's trying to branch out, and I think he has the wrong idea of why he wants to do it. He's saying he just he he wants to be a normie, but. Maybe he just wants to, like, have fun and have friends, and he's not thinking about it the right way. Well, if we think about it, like, in the overarching story from season one to two, even though Ishigami wasn't in the story to begin with, like, he, as he got more, uh, what, involved in the student council, more social things happened because of it. This season, we have an introduction of another uh, another member, and it's more focused on Kaguya and Miyuki's personal relationship. Less big, like, friendship events are happening so far. Mm. And Ishigami could be upset about that or feel like he's not doing something right, you know? Ishigami could be a point of possible jealousy if he realized that Kaguya and Miyuki liked each other. He could get... Um, he could almost be the type of character where you might plant them in a, a sabotager. Yeah. Because he might be like, this is the first place I felt comfortable being myself and these are my friends. I don't want the dynamic to change. I could see that. But like, I I don't know if they'd actually take I, him that route, you know, but. I wouldn't think they would because of how they're painting him now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that like, at this point in the show, if Kaguya and Miyuki t- next episode kissed and started dating, I think that that would only probably benefit how the dynamic is around Ishigami right now. Like it's like it's very focused on the two of them right now, M- Miyuki and mm-hmm. Kaguya. So like I, I just I don't know. I one of my favorite episodes last season predictably would be the firework episode and how all of them were together. Yeah. And I want like a moment that all of them are together soon. And I'm very scared for uh, Ishigami. And well, I mean, if he does in fact get bullied in this up and coming cheerleading squad event, victory and defeat, you do know that festival. every single member of the student council would be together in his defense. Yeah. 
So God, I hope that that's happens. not the altogether Fuck. next moment we get. But oh, his okay. his story um, continues in victory and defeat at the sports festival. Imagine this. Imagine this. Ishigami walks out. It's the whole club laughing at him and making fun of him because he, he's the only one there dressed in girls' clothing. Uh-huh. And then the doors open and the rest of the student council all come out dressed in each other's uniforms to back him up. And, and they make it seem like it's the student council's way to um, motivate yeah. and boost morale of all the contestants in the sports festival. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Let's go with that. Let's, let's go with that. that copium, <laughs> but yes, let's go with that. All right, you good? Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.